Welcome to Microsoft Build 2017. Uh, my name is Richard Taylor. I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Teams team, and I'm really excited to tell you about how you can build a great tab for your Microsoft Teams app. So this is a second in a series of five videos where we're going to talk you through all the different capabilities that you can offer to your users by building a Teams app. Here we're going to focus on what it will take to build a great tab. We think tabs are a really great and different way for you to surface the content of your application to users directly where they are inside Teams. Let's take a look at what that means. If you've already been using Teams, you'll be familiar with the fact that here I have a sales team, and here they have a product launch channel. And this is where they get to gather and decide everything they need to do to make the product launch a success. Of course, they have a conversation about that channel, as you can see here. Um, but they also have these tabs along the top. So here are all the files they need to be successful. Here's the, all the notes they've been taking about the product launch. Um, here, they're actually added a new tab from um, Smartsheet to help them track their sales pipeline. So this surface here is open to all developers, and you know, we hope you can come along and build something great here. Um, so let's illustrate that. Let's imagine you own this um, absolutely stunning task tracking app that's um, taking the world by storm um, and is super popular. But a lot of your users are saying, um, actually, we use Microsoft Teams a lot of the time, and it's difficult for us to switch between Teams and task tracking backwards and forwards. Um, how can you make that integration tighter? Well, what I'm going to do here is show you what that looks like um, once it's integrated, and then we're going to step back and step by step look at the code and see how we built it. So once your tab is added to your Teams app, um, users can come along and do three things essentially to get it there. First of all, they click on your um, apps icon in the tab gallery here. Secondly, they just set up a little bit of configuration. Um, let's give this tab a name. Um, and then step three is they save, and now we have the task plan there as a tab right there inside of Teams. Um, so this is super convenient for users. They're already talking about the product launch, and it's just a click away to go look at all the tasks they need to take care of. But there are some other advantages, too, of having brought this into Teams. We can talk about this tab in the team. So I can ask the team, And um, the great thing about this, as well as being able to talk alongside in the right here, where we've actually got full view of what we're talking about, um, other people who are just following along this channel more casually get to see that this conversation is happening right here on the screen. Um, they can see the responses from the team. And if they want to understand the details of what we're talking about, they're one click away from diving straight back into your task tracking app and seeing all of the details. The other thing you can do is surface these links here, these get links. Um, when I click on this link, um, it opens up a pop-up inside Teams, which is going to give me a, allow you to create a deep link to this tab. And I'm going to just try that one more time. Um, when I click on this link, it's going to open up this dialog, which will give me a deep link, which I can copy paste into the tab. So that one's not working right now, but I can show you one that we created a little bit earlier up here. And they look like this. And when you click on them, they launch back into the tab um, and select the task that the user was interested in. I also can light up a Go to Website button. So this allows you to basically take the user back to your website um, if there's a more detailed operation they need to do that doesn't work in your tab. And then finally, um, whilst we've had these tabs capabilities on the platform since our general release, um, there's something new now we're lighting up in the developer previews that we're talking about here at Build. Um, Lewis talked about this briefly in his introductory video, that here in the um, apps entry point here, I can find my app. Um, and here now, I'm talking with the sample app one-on-one. -on -one. Um, this is the conversation, but also, um, I can add a personal tab. And the difference here now, I'm looking at the tasks that just I own in your task tracking app. Um, this is my private space not shared with the team. So let's take a look about how we um, built all those experiences. Let me head over to um, Visual Studio Code. Um, in fact, I'm going to just put it side by side so we can see what we're talking about here. 
Um, so the first thing I need to do is um, edit the manifest. So Lewis already talked you through um, the core parts of this manifest, so I won't repeat that here. But the new things we've added now are this configurable tabs entry point. Here I set up the configuration URL. Um, and by the way, notice that I'm using ngrok here. ngrok is a great technology for you to um, expose your locally hosted server out on the um, internet. So it makes for a great way for you to test your, your tabs. Um, and I also say this tab um, is in team scope, i.e. that means it's a tab that's for helping teams and in channels, and it's not one of these um, personal scope tabs that I have up here. So once I've added this to the manifest, um, I just need to zip up that manifest um, along with icons, put it in a zip file, and then um, go back to the team area. Go to apps, and now at the bottom here I can click to sideload an app, grab this zip file, and that has now added this app back in as a app that this team can use. And of course, elsewhere we're talking about how you'll be able to distribute apps more widely once you have them published and how you can submit those to us, and we'll talk about that in, uh, in other videos. So now um, let's take a look at what that's achieved. Back in this channel, um, I've that's got me as far as having this icon appear in the tab gallery. When I click on it, um, Microsoft Teams goes to the configuration URL that I've just specified in the manifest. Um, so let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, this is um, a fairly basic file, so some basic CSS and HTML, and the core of it just fits on this one page here. I initialize the Microsoft Teams library. I do a bit of checking to check that I've got all of them with the parameters. And once I have, I'm going to light up the say, Save button. So as soon as I start filling in this final parameter, the Save button is lit up. And then I need to register what happens when Save is clicked. So basically, what happens here is all of the parameters are pulled together into a URL, and I give Teams that URL here. I also specify the entity ID that uniquely identifies the task, and I'll come back to that later, its display name, and also the website URL, the sort of deep link to this task board, um, which is basically the same URL now with this extra web query parameter added on. So that's going to allow my app to tell whether I'm running in, inside Teams or outside of Teams. So now, when I press Save, Teams is going to take this content URL that I've specified and add it as a new tab, and that's what's happened here. So let's go and take a look at that code. That's in index.html. Now remember, this code here is code that you already had. You already had the task tracking app, um, so none of this is, is new. The only pieces that are new to add this to Teams are right here at the end. Um, so I'm doing here, I basically say, if I'm running inside Teams, then I don't want to do add the header of the website. I don't want any of the header or the Chrome or the navigation at the top of the website. Um, I want to allow people just to focus on this task board. So that's what that, that achieves. Of course, I also need to initialize the library, and then I also register a couple of click handlers. So the first one I register is the click handler for clicking on this deep link, and that calls the Microsoft Teams library, and it's worked for us now, which is great. Um, and Microsoft Teams has taken care of putting up that dialogue using the information I've provided here, um, namely the sub-entity ID and the sub-entity label. Um, and the sub-entity ID is important in the next step, which is right here. Um, so when I come to this conversation, paste it in here, and now any other user, not just me, who sees this, or I could have actually messaged someone privately on this, or even sent it in an email, when they click on this, they get taken back to this tab, and it pivots back to that task. There we go. Um, highlighting and selecting the task I've got, um, I'd selected. And that's what this line of code does, essentially just marks the um, selected task, which I received from Teams as part of the context that's available via the Teams library. Um, I already talked about the go to website URL and how that was provided already, earlier when we configured the website, so that's how that worked. Um, the other thing to go on to talk about, though, you may notice that here I'm signed in um, as a user, and I'm actually using that information on this page to label the tasks that belong to me. 
Um, and of course, any website you may be generating is likely to need to sign in maybe to Azure AD, like this test um, tri task tracking system here, or any other identity provider you may be using. So let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to take a look at that in the Edge browser. The first thing I'm actually going to do is just to um, log out so we can see the, what needs to happen when I log back in again. So um, I'm logged out here. So now if I go back to Teams, we'll see that if I go to this site, I now have to, I'm prompted with a sign-in button. Um, and similarly, if I try and add a new tab, I'm also prompted with a sign-in button. So now I click sign in, and the sign in now happens in a pop up provided by the Microsoft Teams library. And the reason for that is, is your Teams tab is running in an iframe. Um, and as you know, identity providers, sign in pages typically won't be allowed to run in iframes for security reasons. So um, I click on that here, and great, I'm now signed in, and immediately I've got my local user information. Um, let's take a look at how that works um, in the code. So in login HTML, um, I'm going to make this full screen, um, we are again checking whether we're running inside Teams or not. If we weren't running inside Teams, this is what the existing code was already doing. Essentially, we went to Azure AD and we said via the state parameter, I would like to come back to the original redirect URL. So that was the index page we started from. If we're running inside Teams, we instead called the Teams library and ask it to run the login process in a pop-up. We also have to make a little bit of a change and tell Azure AD we would like to redirect back to the login result page. And that's a brand new page I'll show you now with um, two lines of code. It initializes the library and says that we've been successful, tells Teams that the login was successful. As a result, Teams will close the pop-up and notify me back in this callback, back in the main screen, that we're now good to go, and now I can do the redirect to the original page that I wanted to do in the first place. Um, and then the final thing to note here, and again, this is almost could have been part of my initial um, functionality of the tab, is that um, I'm now I'm signed in because I'm doing that. I'm picking up information from the graph API. Um, so in this case, all I'm doing is picking up the user display name and using that. Um, obviously, you could do more sophisticated integrations too. So. That is uh, everything you need to know to get started building a, a Microsoft Teams tab. In particular, uh, we've talked about a whole bunch of things that will make tabs successful for your application and really help your users engage more deeply with them. Um, it sits alongside all the other features we will be talking about in other side videos. Um, some of them, as I say, available today and others coming in the developer preview. So do check out the links in the description below um, and watch all the other videos to learn more. And don't forget to submit your app at this link here. Have fun and happy coding.